guys hello today is saturday year 2014 solar system third planet from the sun um and september 20th uh, we have our usual webinar and hello everybody oh we just lost a couple of people hmm we were full, be back, but... I'm sure. hello yeah. hello everybody hello. hi Matt. hello everyone hello everyone we have nice Bill. to see Hi. everybody. Hayan. Hayan, nice to see your face. Hi. You look different today. Hello. <laughs> and Justin, Kim, Sabrina, yes, and, and Sean. Hey, Hello. Everybody. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. So, today is a nice day. Um, we, I spoke recently, yeah, at first we do, we do announcements. Jim's last week of channeling was sort of empty in terms of people didn't uh, reserve and he had free time. So he's available for private sessions and in private sessions you can ask private questions. You can ask about health, spiritual help and health about personal relationships, business relationships, jobs, money, things of that sort, many things which you wouldn't bring up in uh, public sessions. So, and, and that's invaluable. That's invaluable. I, I, get, I get amazing results from that. And some of that you can see published, and some of that is private. Um, and you know how to find Jim. You go to Hukola humancolony.org, there is, on the left, there is page called Jim, menu item called Jim, and there is all his contacts, and best way to contact is through email and Skype. But you can also text him through phone, and Jim usually answers pretty regularly, and he puts you on your, on his, his um, manual paper appointment book. Now you have me. Appointment book, right. I had an idea which I uh, sort of kind of didn't clear yet, but it would be nice if someone helped Jim to uh, bring more channeling customers, like a secretary or promoter, like like a secretary. I mean, that would require some dedication, and that would require some coordination of your appointment book for Jim and Jim's appointment book because I don't think he's ready to jump into electronic one so you have to call him and and da write down the appointments you reserve for him or something like that but brother I Matt, that brother Jim, I would like to offer my assistance and services in any way shape or form I can be helpful oh thank you thank you um, Max we have a group that's evolving at quite a fast pace in Australia um, and we're making connections through email right now, um, and we're going to uh, work and coordinate with Hukulo, and we would love to, of course, involve both of you in the group as well. Um, so yes. As we become more coordinated, we will be in touch a lot more. So hopefully, we'll be able to bring more people looking for channeling sessions to Jim from Australia. In the near future. Uh, did you come up with a name for a group? Uh, not at this stage, no. Um, we've just established um, a website. Uh, it hasn't been written. I've just lost your picture. I don't know why. Uh, uh, we're good. Um, it, there we go. It's in the process of being completed. Um, What's the name Kathy of and I. <laughs> We haven't even done that yet. <laughs> no, it's really oh, early right. days. Um, but right. I will keep you informed. Yes. Um, the group, and I uh, Sorry? Excuse me. Is the group local and physical, or are you kind of uh, remote from each other? Uh, there's a, a traveling distance by plane of about five hours. Uh -huh. um, timeline, there's two hours at the moment. Which is a lot better <laughs> than uh, what we have existing already. Um, so we'll be able to coordinate really well, I believe, and uh, I think it's going to take off because she's lovely, 
Kathy's lovely and she's come comes from the same place that we do. Um, and I think we'll be able to share a lot with each other. Wonderful. Let me and give alive. you a symbol a symbol for the group. Uh, that would be just another version. I'll show you closer. I like, like that. this. Thumbs up or down? It's up. it's down. one thumb is up, one thumb yep. thumb is down, and it's just another version of yin and yang. It's kind oh, of yin lovely. and yang this way, and it also yin and yang this. I can turn it this way also yin and yang. So it's kind of double yin and yang. Also, yes. also along, I along this idea, um, I I've been hosting midweek crystal sessions and. I've been I threw out the idea of a midweek webinar as with these crystal sessions. So, people that have more of like group questions for Hucolo, um beyond the what are my hybridizations, this and this and this, more of the group questions. I'm just needing <clears throat> a little assistance with the posting of the mid of the midweek videos, and it's just based off of crystals, but it's not just about crystals. So it's any questions, anything. Um, in regards to Hucolo and outside of that, and also there's a few meditation groups that I've been getting emails from um, here in Reno that I'm getting in contact with, as well as other. There's a group I found. It's called the four, Fourth Dimensional Group. So there's a few little synchronicities I've run into of groups that I'm getting in contact with. So it, it's it's growing and it's happening. Wonderful. Very good. Did you post uh, what time your uh, your show is? Well, what what it is right now is just um, it's midweek on Wednesday and Thursdays, um, and it's it's pretty much up to the Hukula family. I'm a free any I'm free any time, so it's it's a it's 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 a group idea. So it's usually Wednesday between ten thirty Pacific to around one Pacific. Okay. If if you give a, a specific time, you'll get more people. Because they'll set aside some time for that. So, like, say, 10, 10 30 or something on Pacific. Wednesday? Pacific. Pacific time, yeah. Okay. Then, let's, uh, let's... Uh, it, it's best if you just, because if people don't know when it is, they forget about it and they don't show up. But if they can write down a specific time, then you're, then you're good. And what is the name for that? It's just um, the Crystal Exploration. It's just, uh, I posted it on, on the site, and... Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is just yes, we'll follow that idea, and we'll just Wednesdays and and Thursdays uh, at eleven because I know there's um I believe it's L and Audrey um, have gotten in touch and showed interest as well. So just want to get just want to get in alignment with those that that are open to it. So all right, crystal exploration by Justin on Wednesday and Thursday Pacific time eleven a.m. which would correspond to Eastern Time. Two. Three. Three? Two? Three? Two. Two. Eleven, twelve, one, two. Yeah. Two. Oh, actually, all right. Three hours difference. Very yes. nice. Yes, three hours difference so it would be two. All right, thank you. Congratulations, Justin, for leading. I mean, leadership is like that. You just go and people follow. That's leadership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Pleiadians. Uh, I um, spoke to Tucker a couple days ago uh, in a private session. I invited Pleiadians to speak, and she promised uh, promised to invite a Pleiadian to speak about Pleiadians. So far, we had very few very few contacts with Pleiadians. Mostly, it was through Ken Kenjin, the King of Era, and I wanted someone who has more time and who can speak. Uh, more freely because if you are a ruler you are bound by what you say and if you just have personal comments you you are much bound by things so I wanted someone um, like kind of chatty uh, so that was one invitation another invitation was for dolphins and uh, also I got uh, you know I think the car said that uh, they will try to oh, might be like like I said that that they they will try to connect us to dolphins. Pardon, Max. Um, I've actually that that connection is developing. I have been receiving contacts from the Dolphin Collective um, on and off over the last few weeks. Wonderful. Dolphins and whales. 
Uh, Bashar said that a whale is a physical higher self of dolphins. And one whale is a representation of higher self of dolphins. Okay. Thank you. Um, Angel, uh, do you want to say something? Because there is some Not yet. My All right, then I will mute you, uh, or you mute yourself, and then uh, unmute when you want to speak, because there is some interference. All right, next announcement. Um, Roxy, Roxanne Swainhardt is uh, being a guest, will be a guest tomorrow at the same time. Tomorrow we'll do another hangout like that. And uh, I invite everybody asking questions, and she is a wonderful established channeler with her own audience, and we are honored to have her as a guest. And she is actually an active member, and he, she hangs out hangs out with our members very frequently. Yes, she does. Yes, and she is nice. Yes, she's and graceful. Nice. And she's and oh. very wise and intelligent. Yeah. He adds great value to the group. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have a um, request. Did anyone request the Octarians to come as well? Uh, not yet. I think they came a couple I, times. I never mind my family coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I. They came in prayer. They came in the prayer sessions, but they never have spoken to the group. I don't no, uh, not to the group. But there was a. Uh, Wait, they spoke to you. Yeah, there was a. There no, was they came once. Remember in in yeah. a webinar. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't remember that. Of course, yeah. I can't remember half the stuff. So. Yeah. Yes. Unless I watch it all, I can't remember. But so. I wouldn't mind. Oh, I know, the I, also, I, I know Max requested maybe uh, maybe a Pladian to come through, too. Yes, okay. yeah, it yeah, would be good, too. So yes. Pat has been coming to private sessions. He's a Pleiadian, but he's not been coming to uh, public sessions that I know of. Has anybody heard to Pat in a public session? I, I don't think so. No, I don't he's think so. He's a medical person in the ship, on the ship. Yeah, yeah, and also we have tons of questions. Uh, Sabrina has 12, and I have a couple more from people. So, so Takur needs to come. Yeah. Oh, there was one more. Oh, yeah. Someone asked at the end. He asked, Do, you know, is, uh, invite him at the end, the old riser. Yes. <laughs> old riser. <laughs> yes. Rowie was asking for him to come in. Yeah. I like him a lot. How about, and one how other about person, Atlanteans, yeah. guys? How about Atlanteans? Or, yes. Atlantean yet. Yeah, uh, Lemurians. Or, or, or uh, Lemurians, yes. Lemurians. Yes. Or, or how, about, how about for the Crystal Workshop? Or that's the next one. Oh, Fedorians. 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 Yes. Fedorians. 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 Oh, my goodness. I think um, I think Atlanteans and Lemurians are from distant past. They don't. Yes. Have... I'm picturing a crowd of aliens up there holding different numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Number two, Number three. Yeah, number one is by the yeah. if possible. Yeah. <laughs> I should uh, organize the rest. Yes. Yeah, so, so there's a line of aliens waiting to come down here and talk to you. But the Crystal, again, Skull but Collective, but Crystal Skull Collective and the Rainbow Collectives. Yes. Um, I Some of these I've never channeled. Fendorians I never channeled. The, any of the Rainbow Collectives I haven't channeled yet. Or I, I would like to channel dolphins or whales or anything like that I haven't channeled yes. yet. Yes. Brother yes. I, feel, I, feel, I feel you and I will be able to connect more strongly yes. together with yes. these. Because I have, I have connected and I feel... Your excitement, I feel a co-created moment would assist in this. Well, whoever, it, the thing is about this group, this colony, is that if you've connected to somebody, they can connect to me in some ways. Yay! Oh! Council of Creators. Yes! <laughs> yes, the Council actually, of Creators. The actually, council. Awesome! <laughs> oh, Elohim. Hello, Elohim. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 Max, yes. Yes. 
new, new messages, new, new energies, new beneficial messages, new energies um, that's going to benefit the group consciousness of Hukulo as well as our, our burgeoning um, new groups because I see that Brother Jim is being welcomed into the Enlightenment, um, in the enlightenment Network as well as the rocks you guys seen on there. And this is something that I seen in a vision a couple months ago. I felt as if it was myself in, in there, and now I see who my I see aspects of myself in there, and now I see who it was. It's Brother Jim and Sister Roxy, and and Brother Robert Gautier and Brother Brad Johnson. I contact with them. I actually contact with Rob quite a bit, and it's beautiful. We're expanding, and there's so many beautiful things, and it's it's a uh, it's we're shifting and. Shifting into new ideas and shifting into new energies and new messages. This is what will be most beneficial. Very good. I am Takur. Takur, welcome. Yes, thank you. How are you today? I am well. Uh, the first, uh, the first question we have: um, uh, the Lake Tahoe fires east of Lake Tahoe. Uh, we have a couple of members who wrote and asked very um, strongly to help with that and also they offered uh, guided meditation towards uh, their health of that and towards the rains. There is a contingency that is in the other crafts around your planet. This particular craft that I am in does not facilitate that kind of problem or event, but there are others that are trying to facilitate it, but they cannot do it in a way that makes it known that they exist. So it's very difficult to get involved with that without showing that they are there. However, they are taking steps and they are talking to ground crews individually. They're giving messages to the, those that are working on the fire what to do so that they can actually get ahead of this. So they are giving messages through ESP or whatever you want to call your your te telepathy on the ground crews that can hear it and give them great ideas on how to manage this. This is the best way that we can help. Thank you much. Uh, how uh, what do you think that uh, meditation and prayers would help with that? Meditation and prayers always help. You create your own universe. You can create an ending to those things that you believe you can create an ending for that, that are malevolent. So if you believe that there is a problem here, please pray that it will be solved and it will be corrected, and that things will happen. 
you do have the power because you all have probably had some ESP training or ex telepathic, telepathic training so that you may pray and have results if you group together. I would get together as a group and pray for this problem. It is JC. I live yeah. immediately next to Lake Tahoe where the fires are occurring. Is yeah. there something that I physically, my physicality being close to this, is there something that would be more beneficial in, along with these ideas? Your telepathic ability will help. But as far as your person is involved, there will be nothing that you can do. They will not allow you near it or to even work with it in any way. They have all these things under control. So your prayers and your connection to the others that are praying for this problem will be the most important thing you can do. It will add power to the group. Is there... A... <laughs> yes. Sorry, uh, Tuko, this is Kim. Um, it's lovely to see you again. Thank you for joining us. Um, okay. I have uh, a question regarding um, the ships that are allocated to each country right now yeah. mm -hmm. and I've had some information passed on to me through one of my entities that they have called in our equivalent to backup troops. Um, yes, that, that there's more ships. Areas. Yes, coming from everywhere um, to assist with what's going on right now on the planet. Okay, are you able yeah. to confirm that? I am able to confirm that. There are now three ships around the North American colony, two ships in the European area, three ships in the Asian area, Asian continental area, two ships in Australian area, and South America has only one at the moment, but they are getting one more. Africa has two. The, the poles also have one ship on each end. And okay. Greenland has a ship of its own. That's fabulous. Thank you very much for confirming that. Uh, can you uh, clarify the reasons for this um, for these fires around Lake Tahoe? Is there anything supernatural there? No, it's not a supernatural event. It is. It is only the things that happen in your natural world that happen but it can be controlled by supernatural powers if you lend them to the event. I see. Is there any uh, spiritual being which would assist us with that so we can kind of connect to, to this being and invite help from there, like angelic being or some, some being of that sort? We have already connected with many and they are helping us with, in some ways. Some are not permitted to help in any way because of their beliefs that it is not right to help or interfere with cultural things or planets. But there are those that will lend their prayers, and that is all. But there are some that are actually involved in sending the telepathic messages to those on Earth that can hear them and let them know how to maintain a better location or a better resource for the fire extinguishing. Uh, can you ask if there is any spiritual being who would offer their name for our prayers for that purpose? Raphael. Raphael, thank you. The angel Raphael. Um, any more questions about Lake Tahoe? I, uh, I have a related question. Like, there is, uh, it's not as tragic, I guess it is as tragic. Uh, in Russia the situation is sort of very bad, bad spiritually. It's kind of doom and despair yes. because of the war and because of, I guess, a reptilian, neg negative reptilian energies are very high there. Uh, and also the mushrooms are 
bloom in this fall that is tons of mushrooms. Is there a connection between, between those two things? There is not. Okay. However, reptilians do like mushrooms. It is possible that they have uh, influenced the growth of them. However, I do not see that. Okay. But yes, there is a negative attitude during in the the Russian area that extends throughout the entire world. When think thoughts of Russia come about, negativity is always to follow because of their actions and how they are proceeding in many things. However, it will not last. Oh, thank you. Why? I cannot say. Oh, nice. But it will last for a time. Okay. But it will not be an eternal thing. Thank you. Yeah, we we have many many hopes. There is a lot of hope in Russia. And there is a lot of nice people and nice energies. It's just kind of this time they are kind of hidden. They will come forth again. Thank you, uh, Sabrina. I guess you now go with uh, the questions in a way. Uh, I guess one person from live audience and one person who submitted the questions in advance. Okay. Mm. The first question is from. Um, he said to pronounce it Sage, uh, his name, but it's spelled S A H E J. Sage, yes. Okay. Um, yes. What did my dream of the UFO visit site members mean, and was that really Lakesh talking to me? And any news updates on the trip my star family was planning for me? Your star family is planning a trip for you, but not quite yet. The time is not quite right for you to plan that trip. I mean, to go on that trip. The planning is in, in existence already. However, yes, Lakesh did speak to you briefly. The first question was what about the UFO dream. Yes. It was a dream, but it was brought to you by Lakesh for a particular reason. I am not certain. I would have to speak to him about that, but I know that he brought that dream to you. And you understand it more than than you would like to, actually, or than you gave, give it. Oh, I cannot say. Himself credit? Yes. It was hard yes. for me to put those words in because our language, there is no such phrase. Okay. Um, next question was from Ruth. Um, she would like to know what ships are on the dark side of the moon. Um, I'll, I'll, and they have been seen, but no one knows why they are there. There are many ships of different species on the dark side of the moon. That side of the moon has been used for colonization for a long period of time. Um, there are many dwellings within the moon it is becoming hollowed out because there are many different civilizations wanting to observe from that point of advantage so yes there are seven different species there that get along well okay <laughs> um, next question was from Eugene yes um, and he wanted to know, you had said about um, four-dimensional thoughts. He yeah. wants to be able to distinguish four-dimensional thoughts from three-dimensional thoughts to help himself. Yes. Three-dimensional thoughts are those things that are common to Earth, that are the density of your thoughts, like touching things and becoming part of the earth and things of this nature and interacting with humans of the same species when you are in fourth dimension 
many of these things seem to not connect with you. They do not seem to, you do not seem to understand them as well as when you're in the third density. You become a little, they call it daydreaming sometimes. It is when you disconnect from those things that are third density and become in a realm of thought patterns that do not relate exactly to the earth. They are in a thought pattern resonation and they move upward and not downward. If you have negative thought pattern resonations when you are daydreaming, this is actually something different than a fourth dimensional experience. But it is a spiritual experience nevertheless. But fourth dimensional experiences will be of a positive nature moving upward and connecting to thoughts that you did not have before or thoughts not connected to the, the things that are normal on the earth and physical to the earth. Does this make more sense? Yes. yes. Now, wh when it comes to, let's say, application for schooling, yes. um, how can he distinguish, how can he say to himself, okay, this is fourth dimensional, it won't help me in my three dimensional work? Whenever he is experiencing fourth dimensional energy and thought patterns, he must be aware of it. Be aware of where you are at the time. Force yourself to have an awareness of if you are in fourth dimensional, third dimensional. You can definitely be aware of this. And when you are in the fourth dimension and thinking these thoughts, I know they can be very, very good thoughts and things that you would not want to leave. However, mm -hmm. for your third dimensional experience, you must bring yourself down to the third dimension and hold on to the learning experience of the fourth dimension because it is a learning experience. Do you understand? Yes. But those thoughts from the fourth dimension are not necessarily part of the learning process of the third dimension you must bring them up through before they must be connected before they are a learning experience for both third and fourth but I can see that in this particular ind individual that the grounding is not there so they cannot pull through do you understand so yeah. there is a necessity for them to come and be entertain the third dimension which I mean by saying that they must be they need more communication with it more grounding with it this person does not speak to a lot of people when he's in the fourth dimensional and that and that takes him lets him continue in the fourth dimension he needs to come down and speak to someone or connect to the earth or connect to something that is that is physical and able to be touched, able to be understood as third dimension. Do you understand? So, so perhaps being with more people that are more three dimensional would help him. Yes, very much. Okay. Because he will make an effort to understand what they are saying. Because in fourth dimensional, you sort of what is sort of you you make it so that you're when you speak to the third dimension in the fourth dimension you not only don't understand exactly what they're saying but you can mis misinterpret even what you are doing in that dimension do you understand you can yes. hear something totally different than what is said right and that's where he's trying to get the clarity yes. um, for for the schooling so that if he's seeing uh, it is boring for him at times. So therefore, when he is in the classroom, he must touch the desk and realize that he is in third dimension. Touch something that is third dimensional, solid, and then think about it. Pull himself down to this dimension and actually pay attention, even looking at the squares on the floor, paying attention to the actual third dimensional items a pencil, a pen, a paper, and then he can re 
assign his thought pattern to attention. Okay. Attention. All right. Because he needs that attention. He's lost. He's in the fourth dimension one, and the attention is the third dimension. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Takur. I really appreciate that. There are other things that I could tell him to do as well, but that would take much time. That's okay. That is a I, beginning. If that does not work, talk to me again. Okay. I will set a private session then. Um, okay. The next question was from uh, Terry Wildberry. Um, she's in Australia. And uh, I would love to know about my DNA inheritance percentage of aliens. This, that would be her question. Percentage of alien DNA, is that your question? Yes. Her alien DNA is interesting because it is pulled from Sirius and Andromeda more than any other species. His, her connection to those areas is strong. It's is there a percentage that you can give us at this time? We are learning that you misunderstand when we give a percentage. However, I will anyway. Her percentage of DNA from Andromeda is four percent. Her and her other Syrian DNA is three percent. Okay, can you expand on why are we um, misreading the the numbers that you that you give us? Um, it all right. Let me try to explain. The human DNA is one hundred percent human. There is a hundred percent human DNA. This other DNA that is is there is extra DNA and not part of your human DNA. Therefore. It is felt in a different way. Do you understand that? Yes. So it's like she has 107% DNA. Mm -hmm. Max would probably understand this more than anyone. Yes. Do you understand that, Max? Uh, we'll discuss it maybe after. I don't want to take channeling time. Yes. I will give my explanation maybe later. Yes, it is hidden in hidden DNA in some senses. So would that be true also for the hybrids? Yes, in some ways, yes. I would explain that, and I would have Max. Okay. Un Max understands that better than anybody. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll let others ask questions, and then we'll get back to to yes. Who questions? There are other questions. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know if Sean. Do you have any questions? I know he had some when we were together, and I think they were important. I mute your spell. Yes, I feel as if there is something off about you today, Tucker. Something is off? Yes. In what sense? Spiritually, physically, mentally? Uh, what sense is it off? Or is it all the senses? It's all the senses. And this feeling of being off, how does it feel to you right now? It's very strange. I can't describe it. I see. Let me see what is going on with you. One moment. Waka, Moshu Dibo, Vridaka, Chorba. This has been happening for a little while now. What beings have you invited to be with you? There is another there that should not be there. That is why you're feeling strange. It is not an alien, but a spirit. I haven't invited any spirits into me yet. Well, one has invited itself. One moment, please. 
be sure that you protect yourself from spirits. This is not a malevolent spirit, however, it is a spirit that would cause you to feel this way. Let me explain. It is not yet passed through to the light. It is an earthbound spirit. It is not a bad spirit, but it is not a grounded spirit, and is not one that knows what to do in this particular realm. So it has attached itself to you because you are very giving, understanding, and loving. But you must tell him to go to the light. It is a male. And he is from your country. And he is roaming the countryside. And he has found you. And you feel off. Because he feels off. And he, you are experiencing his realm in some senses. Does this make sense to you? So the spirit is from the countryside. He is roaming because he does not understand what is happening to him. So he is in despair. But he is not an evil spirit. He just needs to go to the light. One moment. Let me speak to him. One moment. Remember, there is no reason for you to be feeling this. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Logically, you must understand there is no reason to be feeling this way. So you must work with that knowledge, that logic, to move away from this feeling because you cannot let him control how you feel. Understand that we are giving you light, love, and understanding as well. Let him move forward and not be attached to you. Just ask him to leave, please. Sean? Yes. yes. His name is O'Shannon. O'Shannon. Um, Tucker, um, I was wondering for Sean if, um, Tepe could help him with some, uh, health issues. Um, he's having something done and I was wondering if she could help for his body to absorb whatever is done for him to help yes. him along that. Tepe is a male, but he is on the ship. I will get in touch oh, okay. Okay. with him, and he will speak privately to Sean. Okay, thank you. All right, Hayam, you're next. Hayan. Thank you, Sabrima. Hello, Tucker. Yes, Hayan, how are you? I am good. Nice to talk to you. Nice to speak with you. Uh, so, I had a couple of webinars ago, you told me that I may or may not be able to do a Lyran hybridization. You are able. We have finished that analysis. Okay. You will be uh, able to do Lyran hybridization. I will have that. Yes. It will not start right away. Right. We have to wait for some time for everything else to settle in your system and assimilate. But it will happen within a month or two. Okay. Uh, the, the reason why I brought this up, because the night, the, on that night, the same night, I dreamt that someone was showing me showing me a feline animal and wanting me to interact with that, and I was a little bit afraid, kind of. It is all right. Yes, this was part of the ex examination to find out if Lirin was able to be put into your system. Yeah, I felt that as well. Yes. Okay. And it was affirmative. Yes, you are able. Wonderful. 
but um, and I now I have uh, I have the Arcturian is going on. Yes, right that is still working within you. That is the one that needs to assimilate into your system. It is a little bit lighter, but it does not assimilate with human bodies as easily. It takes a little more time. But doesn't this mean that I will be having five different... You will be the first with five. But they will not do it unless it is absolutely necessary, but it appears that it will be able to happen, since the percentages are smaller in some of the other ones. Mm. Okay. Exciting. Wonderful. Uh, I would like to ask... We are experimenting with all different kinds of hybridization and different... We have found that so far there has not been any major ill effects with anyone. Yeah. Yet. But, of course, a simulation is not complete with many. Yes. And uh, maybe we should ask Max about this, but quick well, question is, is um, we have junk DNA, and that would be our, uh, our old alien, alien DNA, right? Yeah, there are areas in the DNA that are free agent fo sort of I keep saying sort of, that's a gym word <laughs> there are free agent areas in the DNA where it can be hidden or it can be put where it does not come out and change things in a major way, does that make sense to you? Yes and you can activate it it is activated already but it will be it will assimilate and become part of who you are, yes. Mm. But it is additional to your DNA and not exactly part of it. Yes, you mean the new hybridization. Yes, it is not part of your DNA, but it becomes part as additional DNA. Yes. Do you understand that? Yeah. So you're still 100% the same human that you were with additional DNA. Okay, yeah. It's not like you took something out, you just Correct. added. You will yeah. not do that. That is not permitted. Yeah. Is The reptilian was there from the beginning, right? The reptilian was there from the beginning, yes. And it's hmm. a small percentage. Uh, I have a general question. Yes. How is the relationship between different races? What is the etiquette uh, between you guys? The protocol, the protocol between races and species is very interesting one to another. We try all to be friendly with one another, and it is working to some extent. It is polite to use the proper co protocols when speaking to each representative of that species. However, there are some that won't speak to us at this time. So that is not necessarily a negative thing. It is just something that has not been established yet. And could those also be uh, good races that ain't talking to you, that is not talking to you? Yes. Hmm. Okay, they but about yes. Neutral. About the negative uh, races, we even speak to negative races because it is necessary to stay informed. We give them our information, not fully, but to keep them informed how we are moving in our realms, and they. They tell us about themselves also. It is because of that that we know that they are in certain areas. And they are not shy about telling us that they take over people or whatever. Hmm. These things are not something that the reptilians keep hidden. They are proud of their accomplishments. And they believe that we are weak because we do not do similar things. However, yes. that is their opinion and we 
respect it to some degree, although we do not believe that it is correct. Yes. We would not call them wrong, however, just not correct. There is a difference. Okay. Not loving. Wrong has a bad connotation to it. Not correct is more intellectual and logical. Yes. And would you say that you don't interfere unless they are too violent or too... If they, if they cross the lines on the Galactic Federation's rules, then we would have to interact. Yes. But what, how they have done what they have done, they have done with permission from those from Earth, and so therefore we cannot fault them for that because Earthlings have given them the permission for the things that they have done. Do you understand? Yes, you mean the world elite. Yes, the world elite has given them that permission and therefore we cannot come and say that that is a bad thing because it is your world and you have given permission. As part of that the decision is that coming from the collective oversoul of the human human race? No, it is not. The oversoul of the human race is the energies that come from those who pass through the realms have left either alien or human bodies or energy bodies and become part of a huge energy source. Now they are individuals within the collective, however that source is a community. They can split off from it, but usually it is a one massive solid energy community. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Sentient, it's a sentient energy community of souls, if you will. Yes. What, what would be crossing the line from the Galactic Federation rules. If they did something that humans did not agree to. All right. On what because level? Or if they forced someone to agree to something that they did not want. Any kind of force or or movement in a negative way without permission of the human race would be grounds for them to be removed. Yeah. However, they're very diplomatic and in this case very persuasive. Who is very diplomatic? The reptilians that are there in the Russian area. They have convinced many of the higher authorities there that that is the right thing to do. And so they've given themselves over to a thought pattern that is not necessarily positive. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm done. I just wanted to say that I have uh, given my daughter the name Kinda. Kinda. Yes. Could you spell that so they have it written correctly? K I N D A. Kinda. Very good. I will pass that. Kinda. Yes. Also, you're next. Hello, friend. Hello. So um, I will make this short so other human beings can uh, get their questions in. Um, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you as well. Well, technically, untechnically. Um, uh, what I'd really like to understand, everyone seems to be asking the same questions about uh, star lineages and things like that. I do have a little bit of uh, uh, foreknowledge about uh, Syrian and Arcturian and things like that, but... I'd like a, uh, a download on that, if you could. Uh, my lineages. Your lineages. Star, star lineages, that is. Yes. There is Pleiadian within you. 
Have you received a language yet? You know, I, I don't know if it's a language. I just babble, and it sounds like kind of pretty sometimes. I think that you have received a download of languages from the Pleiadian peoples. There is where your close ties lie. Really? And I see that there is something... You are not quite believing that it is a language, so it's not easily coming. But just accept it and let it flow. I personally have actually gone out of my way to uh, try to start learning channeling and you don't really learn light languages, they kind of just happen, but uh, that as well. Exactly. Uh, my, my primary focus in this life is more or less towards animals, and uh, another question I would have is, as far as the entire animal consciousness <clears throat> is concerned, um, how can I help turn on the telepathic, empathic abilities to uh, actually become a physical entity to help them and a physical voice for them? A physical voice for animals is difficult unless you know exactly their vibration, meaning that when you are with them, you resonate and become part of them and understand how they're feeling at that time. In that sense, when you come to that resonation with the animal, then you are able to give your thoughts to them. They will not give you their thoughts immediately until they know and trust you as a telepathic connection. Do you understand? Sure. Their telepathic connection is one with another. Right. But they do not telepathically feel natural with humans until you are telepathic with them first. Then, once you establish a contact, you will understand that they will feel calm and natural, and they will love you even greater than they did before because you have taken the time to make a connection that is not normal. Does this make sense to you? Absolutely. And their, their senses of survival, comfort, love, understanding, and needs will come through that connection. And they can pass that connection on to others. Right. On the same species of animals. They cannot pass that on to, say, a dog cannot pass it to a bird or a cat. But huh. a dog can pass it to another dog that they know that you have that s specific understanding and they will be more apt to become part of your network of, of telepathy. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Well, just, just so I'm kind of clarifying this in my head, uh, what you're talking about is if I am to make uh, an empathic connection to a specific, uh, you know, breed yeah. or dogs, they would yeah. be able to communicate within themselves to allow me uh, less work for being allowed to speak to other dogs. Correct. correct? They can okay. pass that on that you are okay. And Is that, that they have felt you and understand you and this will give the other dogs some understanding of who you are and they will be less afraid of you in the long run. Either that or they will reject it completely. But usually they will accept it completely. Does, does that have anything to in correlation with morphogenetic fields? Yes, it does. Amazing. Wow. Um, okay, it does so. in, a, in a very broad sense. Sure. But does have something to do, do with morphogenetic fields because they do exist in your reality. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, I guess the last question would be when I was meditating uh, two days ago, uh, I got pretty deep and it started creeping me out a little bit because my left hand started raising and I wasn't raising it. Uh, <laughs> and I... It is all right. What has happened there is that you're going th we're going through a dimensional shift. And when that happens, sometimes the body parts become lighter. The entire body feels lighter in many senses. And it, it does change DNA in some ways that, that makes it fourth dimensional in many respects, and that is a lighter feeling. 
So do not be, as you call it, creeped out. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, it creeped out. Actually, of your dimension that you are able to do this. However, ground yourself so that you may pull that energy from the ground through the fourth dimension, and you will feel less creeped out. You will feel grounded, grounded as well as light and energetic. Okay, understood. Um, sorry, I feel like I'm being greedy now, but uh, as far as the, I was hoping for a message from the animal consciousness entirety uh, for me. You will get a message, but not quite yet. Okay. First, you must establish your telepathic contact tact sure. with them before they will give you a message. They're not going to give you a message from outside their own realm unless you are connected to it. Okay. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. That is all. Sarah, you're next. Hello, Sarah. Sarah, welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming. Thank um, you. I have a question for myself and for Slava. Questions, that is. Yes. Um, this, there are many other questions. Yes. This week I had a dream. I believe I was visited by Grace. Yes. And they transported me somewhere where I feel that they were trying to see what I would, would or would not accept, meaning dinosaurs or things that may look scary to me. Yes. And um, then I saw little green men, and one was purple. <laughs> and I saw a baby, too. <laughs> Interesting. You, they have taken you to a planetary system that is fairly remote. Um, the little green men are actually and the little purple one as well, are from a fairly primitive culture in the Andromeda sector. It seems like we're in the Andromeda sector a lot today. But the Andromeda sector has some planets with primitive life forms. They are not as advanced as humans, even. They would be more... Um, in the probably fourth century adv advancement of your time period. Fourth, wow. theory, fourth century AD time period. Oh, but were they Andromedans or no? Yes, they were part of the Andromedan area, yes. Oh. And they do have these kind of animals on their planet as well. Oh, very good. And the baby? Was, was a it child. mine? No, the baby was not yours. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Yes, no, the baby was not yours. I'm not sure why they threw that in there, but it was not yours. <laughs> well, he was lovely. He was. Perhaps it was his curiosity that let you see him. Uh-huh. Um, oh, for Slava. Slava. Welcome. Yes. He had three questions. Uh, he says, my hybrid child, Alyosha, could you please describe how he looks like and what, his hy what hybrid he is? It is very exciting for him. That's his first question. He has just recently been born, I believe. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what hybrid he is? He is your yield hybrid. Your yield hybrid. Okay. Second, he has been born for a while. Oh, very good. I am in the midst of coordinating many, many hybrid children at this time. It is an additional responsibility that I have taken on. So it is oh, easy to make a mistake mm -hmm. because there are so many. And some of them are similar in some ways. 
Very good. And what do they look like? Actually, it looks more human than anything else. Blue eyes. A, actually, it has hair. He has hair. It is brown in color. What else would you like to know? Okay, second question. A week ago, I studied something during sleep. There was two teachers, and it was like a class with many people. Can you say what did I learn, and how is it going? These are telepathic classes. There can be up to five teachers in a telepathic class because you, there are different ways to use telepathy and there are different species that are speaking and telepathically connecting in English and then showing them examples of their language as well. So this was a telepathic class. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the last one is, can you please read my last letter to Gert Fickner, in which I wrote about a girl. Please reply if it is possible. Yes. We will, we will read that and respond if, if necessary or if possible. Thank you very much. Send that information to Jim's website so that I can read it more easily. Can that be done? Or is it too private? Uh, for Slava? Yes. Uh, I, I believe he can. <laughs> he can if he just sends it privately to Jim and it would be on the website. Yes, that's, that is all. And yes. I will be able to get it easier. Yes. Oh, just to confirm, you said I was visited by the Greys because I saw something. Yes, like yes you were. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, that's it. I have very little time left. Someone okay. else needs to come through. Oh, yes, okay. please. Brian? Yes, greetings to Kerr. Greetings. Uh, just a quick, two quick questions. Um, there was a race that I've heard, and I wanted a little bit more clarity on it, more of a general question. Uh, the Clares, have yeah, you heard the of them? The Under the Ocean group. Have they been here for a long time? Yes, they have. Are they, they working? They have yes, colonies and domes under the Pacific Ocean in the deepest realms of it. And they are responsible for some of your cattle killings. But they have not been interactive with the people on Earth for a while now. They're finding it difficult to survive in the ocean now because there is much earthquakes and disruption there. Are any fashions of them um, what you call working with Grook Fuknir or are they um, opening up to the heart, you know what I mean, through the heart? They are a singularity, meaning that they do not participate in anyone's agendas at this time. However, we have reached out to them more than once, and they have responded that one day they will get to the point where they want to speak to us, but not quite yet. Okay. One last question is, um, long ago in my dream time, I saw these beans inside their ship it was all white their chalk their skin is chalky white yes. um, their eyes look a little bit more human but they are all white very loving uh, they, uh, they were around a control deck um, um, and I was in front of them like uh, being displayed yes. and I was wondering who these beings are that would be the Fendorians wow okay thank you thank they you much love light very airy and very high spiritually. Ah. I am surprised that you they let you see the white room. This is the higher of the spiritual rooms. They have rooms of every color. 
Yes. But the white room is the spirit room. Wow. The white room is where they fade into the spirit. Do you understand? Yes. Because it is the color of their skin and the color of their spirit. They fade into the high white room. But yes. the other rooms are for energy and for understanding and for meditating. They also have rooms that are not specifically of one color, which are actually more social rooms. It was pretty amazing feeling just being there. I felt a lot of compassion and love. And they there. Yes, yes, they are. That was the spirit room, and it's a very high and very private feeling room. They go there to be one with spirit. Interesting. Much love and appreciation. Thank you, Dicker. You are welcome. Kim. Yes, hello, Tucker. It's Kim yeah. again. I will be very quick. I understand you need to leave. Um, I have a question with regard to my Yael hybrid son, Mika. Yes. Um, has he been born as yet? He will be born within six days. Oh, my goodness. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm very excited about this. I, I would like to request um, that perhaps at some point I may be able to hold him. Um, that will be happening, are. but not right away. But you will be able to hold him. They will holographically transfer you there, and you will be able to touch him and speak to him, hold him, and see him. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. And just lastly, very quickly, I'd like to just request, I have been to the Crystal Room a couple of times and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yeah. I would really appreciate going back again. So I'm asking for permission, please. Yes, we'll be back to the Crystal Room when you do your telepathic classes. You will be able to Thank do you that in your spare time while you're there. Thank you so much, Tako. Much love. Namaste. Namaste. I must go now. Thank you very much for your service and for your help. Ukata. Thank, Thank you, Tako. Namaste to all of you. Love you very much. Uha. Namaste. Uha. 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 You are becoming our celebrity. <laughs> Hello. You gotta be <laughs> so. <laughs> no, we're just gently inviting. It's up. To no, you. I mean with them. You have to be pushy. You have to go. That's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Sure. Oh, no, it's not your turn. Oh, oh you don't have anything to say. I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, these bodies are so freaking uncomfortable. <laughs> <sighs> What's new in your life? <laughs> Everything's new every day. Everything's new every day. I just... I'm moving on. I'm reading a lot of stuff. I wanted to tell you that some of your people are getting much better in some ways. I mean, they, they're, the honor system is getting better in some ways. I mean, the way you guys interact, I know it's like it's sort of mushy, but it's, it's still... <laughs> it's, 
still okay because you're using honor and strength in some ways. You know, you need to be a little bit more pushy sometimes. I mean, bring that out. That, that's part of who you are, right? Who? Isn't that part of who you are? I mean, it's, it's like, uh, no, that's wrong. And you have to say it's wrong. So, you know, keep that in mind. That, like, if somebody's pushing at you and they're wrong, you just have to say it. You just don't go, okay. No. <laughs> well. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the way you do it. You, just, you don't just agree with it. You, and then later go, oh, they're full of shit. So <laughs> you don't do that. How, how about we are diplomatic but firm? That's better. To just speak your mind, be firm, just tell the way it is. You like me because I tell it the way it is, right? Right. Yes. yes. Well, they do that with you too. I'm right now, I got some energy for you, organizer, so you feel more comfortable. Yes, I know, but I mean, uh, diplomacy is good, yeah, but sometimes you need to just say it, you know? Right. Some, right. Diplo whenever you just need to say it, you just need to say it. I mean,. That's my message. You guys are too diplomatic sometimes. And not to me making trouble. I don't think that you're trying to make trouble. You can say, I don't mean to make trouble, but you're bullshit. <laughs> you're, we, we enjoy your bluntness. Well, I, I, you it, you in some ways remind me of my grandmother. I, I remind you of your grandmother. God. Yes, she was bold. She was yeah. bold. She was but that's bold. what it's. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah. what that's what I feel that he's old yeah. risers really speaking on. And I respected her so. Yeah. Well, she just spoke her mind then. So, anyway, no, I love you guys. I mean, yeah, I do. I, I just don't want to admit it, but I I'm do so love you. I'm so happy you actually said that. I love you guys, and it's... Don't get too pushy uh, on them. <laughs> you're just, just be honest with one another, you know? The talking behind the back stuff is not good. If, you're, if you have a problem, you have to speak it. Good so, and, and it can, it can be out of... It, it it can be out of love. You could you might not like it, but you know what? You learn from it. You'll learn from it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Don't say because not everybody likes everybody. It's just impossible. Oh, dang. But anyway, <laughs> not everybody likes everybody. So you can't just go. Well, I... <laughs> You gotta speak up and tell them what it is, and maybe it'll cause a good friendship because you spoke your mind, and now you like each other instead of being here and here and and, and just and not talking or whatever. You just right. gotta get it together, you know. And if there's a problem, you can be diplomatic if you want, but you can't let it go and just run away from it. It's just not gonna work. Right. And there are people out there in your community that are running away because they don't want to cause any problems. But if it's out of love, gosh, speak your mind. Yeah. Thank you. For the message. <laughs> Thank you for the message. It is absolutely needed. Yeah, yes. you guys it's... love each other. So you, why can't you talk to each other about it? Things that are touchy. Hey, I can talk to you about it, and I don't care. <laughs> well, my, love me, my, don't love me. Blah, well, my, my idea in this moment is I have nothing but infinite unconditional love, gratitude, appreciation in the infinite manner, and and true respect for everyone. However, the last few weeks there has been an issue that others have seen that I've been raising my hand and being very polite. And my questions are being put on the back burner. And I feel that this moment is you coming through to just, hey, you're, we are respectful people, honor, honorable people, and there's no need for one person to be the gatekeeper. We are all respectful. We know how to ask okay. questions and, and, and turns. There's no reason someone shouldn't be able to ask questions for the group 
and that's true. The, well, but okay, let me tell you this. You can do things out of love, but when you receive the information, because they're going to come back to you too and say, I don't like this about you if you say something about them, don't take it as hostility. Don't take it as, oh, we can't ever possibly get together with this. No, you have to understand that you're all freaking human and you're all freaking make mistakes and you all have your problems and nobody's perfect and some people don't like you because of this or that, but you know you're all one spirit in a sense. So why can't you just say what you want to say and then not be insulting about it? You know what I mean? I'm not insulted. You can say anything you want to me. You can say anything you want. And I'm not going to go, ooh, cry. No, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, there has been something that's been sitting on my heart. Really. All right. Get it on set. It is this idea of blocking people who have different ideas from yourself. Yes. Everyone who comes to this group is supposed to be here. No one should feel shunned for any reason whatsoever. Okay. I, Everyone. I, okay, that's cool. I don't know what you're talking about, but I don't... I understand you don't know what I'm talking about, but well, those you, involved understand. I see. You don't want to block someone. That's great. So, yeah, let them speak their mind. Let them, let yes. them say what they want to say. That's all. You know, it's a, your world is supposed to be free. Yeah, get, get the freedom. So, and... See if you can work out your problems. You know, you can't you can't just run away. That's what I'm saying. You guys run away, so forget it. That's not the way to do things. If you want to be a community, you have to get together. All your thoughts are valuable. Yes, everyone's so, thoughts are valuable. No matter how different it is, everyone's right. thoughts are valuable. Yes, right. So... And everyone's intent here is seems to be pretty on the up and up for the most part. There's a couple, but most of you are good. Yeah. So I gotta go. I can't stand it here anymore. <laughs> I love you. You know that. I love you. I love you, you too. Oh, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Is a crystal star that I could use to, um, from when you come in, to assist and sending you energies to keep you here longer. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go for now because there's somebody else that keeps pestering me to come. <laughs> oh my! So, yeah, thank you for the visit. Come again. Uh, our crowd loves your uh, energy. <laughs> yeah, but this body sucks. <laughs> Old Roger, you're welcome in my body anytime, anywhere. I'm sure it'll suck just as bad. Be appreciative of the body that you're yeah, in because yeah. otherwise appreciate you would not be able to speak to us. So love it. Well, I just get me a body with a tail, okay? <laughs> Maybe that will come soon. <laughs> oh, God, I'm out of here. Bye. Oh, thank you thank so you. much for coming. Love you. Namaste. Love you. Yeah, yeah. Bye. <laughs> character. Yeah, 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 yeah. My. <laughs> <laughs>
am from the Atlantean culture. Thank you very much for coming through. This is not a soft place, but it is a place of peace. Welcome here. Thank you. Can you introduce your name? I'm Kalashan. Hey, Kalashan. Oh, um, yeah, we are very interested in Atlanteans. Uh, I guess we are repeating some of your lessons and trying to get them better. You are coming into a time much like the time we left this earth. There was much pain and much technology being born, but it was much higher than this. Yet we were not destroyed by our technology, but by Mother Earth herself in many respects. The war that we had did not destroy us, but the, the great upheaval of Earth did swallow us. Was it 23 and a half thousand years ago? Numbers. Ah. It was actually a bit longer than that ago. Was it that the moon crashed on the ground? No. No? That was false information. Ah. No. There was a tumultuous earthquake. It was very sad. This is the wave I've been seeing in my dream states. And I've re been receiving past life memories of Atlantean life as a, a high priest, if you will. Someone that was considered in a leadership position. Uh, we did a crystal hangout in which Sister Sabrina and Brother Rowie and others connect. We all connect. Yes. It was a time of great upheaval back then, and we are connecting now with many. The reason for our connecting is to bring our thought patterns to you. Thank you. There was much peace in Atlantis and many species as well. The mermaids that were on our shores were lost mostly when this happened as well. For it drew the piece of land straight down. Mm -hmm. Much was lost. Few escaped, but some did. There are those who had means of transportation that got them out mm -hmm. in time, and several did teleport to the moon or other places where we had a station What were your gods at that time? Gods. The gods of the gods. Some were nameless because they were greater than a name. And you projected yourself into their light and they became your name because you were who they were. What is in our culture that comes from Atlantis? There were a few things. 
light, electricity that is transformed. There will be things coming to you from us that you have not yet. But there are many things that are part of your world that we were part of as well. We connected with your other continents and shared wealth with them. Our favorites were the Egyptians and the Greeks. That's what they would be known as now. They had different names back then. But their cultures were agreeable to ours. And the Gnostics. Mm -hmm. Can you um, teach us about your spirituality and anything that we could use to help ourselves? There will come a time when you will be able to project yourself, not just astrally travel, but to actually project yourself to another place. While your body remains in one place, you will be aware of your body in another place as well. Astral projection in full form will be necessitated in your future. We had learned to do this so that we may be with those far away when they were ill or needed help, or when anything was notified to us that needed our attention, we either traveled there or projected there to help with this situation. Can you, can you give us what? No, about about crystals? Can you tell us how you use crystals and how we can use them? Crystals, when they are used in unity, in special shapes and forms, create power grids that are amazing, and power grids that are transforming when you put the pr appropriate light in the appropriate place with the appropriate vibration there will be transformation your crystal skulls were dispersed from Atlantis so you were using the portals the portals were from Atlantis they were there were 12 on Atlantis that were correlated to the 12 on your planet on other places so that we could move between them can you uh, give us a prayer in Atlantean language and then translate I believe I can yes thank you Chuck, <laughs> The formation of energy eternal. Light shows out through them. Let that shine through your eyes because your energy is light. Your energy is within you, in the forms, that which you have not taken yet, and the forms which are you that you have taken. 
And now that you are aware of light and energy and the forms that are even other forms that are you, you must be aware that you are in the realm of possibilities. Think not of only the things that you can do within yourselves, but what you can do outside of your realm with your total consciousness binding together. So therefore, your souls create a power that exists beyond that which anyone can believe is the power. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's so meaningful for us. Thank you. It's a big present. Uh, where from are you speaking to us? I am from spirit. Is Atlantean consciousness still kind of exist by itself or is it dissolved now? No, we exist forever. How many of Atlanteans incarnated as modern humans? I would say most of them, right? Many thousands are with you right now. Have you had personally uh, modern incarnations? I will be back to your planet within a decade. And you have been before, right? Yes. Ah. And most of us present here right now in this meeting, we all have been in Atlantis? Four of these people have been to Atlantis. And Jim and I? You have been. Have you met? No. Ah. Have, have I been? been? I will not mention those because okay. the identity of those that are Atlanteans will be presented at their proper time. Oh, okay. Because I, I have a memory. If you have a memory, then you are connected. Okay. Uh, Justin, did you want to ask something? JC. Any others? I think his microphone might be messed up. Yeah, I, I, think I have is. a question. Yes. Yes, uh, greetings, my friend. How are you? I am well. Yes. Um, in the times of Atlantis, what other races from other civilizations were had a strong hold or what you call were very tied to the Atlanteans? The Egyptians, the Gnostics, and the Greeks. Some of those that you call Italians. Extraterrestrial races. Ah, uh, we had connections with several other species. The Syrians were our favorites. Yes. The Octorians were our favorites. The Fendorians were our favorites. Yes. And then there were other lesser civilizations, but yet friendly enough for our connection. But those were our three allies from outer worlds. Yes. Thank you. Much love to you, my friend. Anybody else have questions? The, Hello. The Adamant School from the Crystal School Collective has been connecting and delivering messages as well as others from Lemuria, Atlanteans, Gnostics. Um, I've been feeling the need to connect with the family of ours to create these crystal grids to for those of us that are connected with the Atlantean energy. The crystal grids will be energized when you find the right vibration in your brain. You will understand this when you see them unite in a way that has not been seen before on Earth except in the Atlantean culture. 
We could unite the crystals in many ways to bring many things to us, to understand many things, and to draw those from the outer realms of space to us. These things will vibrate in a way that will shine in your mind. No visible change will come, but you will see the visible change only in your head. Do you understand? Yes. The crystals themselves will not light up or become different, but in your mind they will light up and become different when the right vibration is achieved. But it is on an individual basis how you control your crystals and which crystals you have for your possessions and which crystals you will use to do what things. And remember, the stones are not to be left out as well. There are stones that are aids to the crystals. Yes, I have been working with stones as well. Do not forget them. They are, they are valuable to your power and your assessment to the crystal. Yes, they are extremely important. I use stones with my crystals as well as vocal tones, different sounds, sunlight, moonlight, salt, or pardon, um, sea salt, filtered water baths. I've also brought some water from the ocean. Don't forget the energy from yourself. This is the catalyst for all other energies. Your connection to all the things that you speak of must be true, or they will not connect true to your crystals. When you look at our community and our light workers, what do you find most resonating with you? What is good? That they believe and understand. That they move forward as they are thinking and believing. Because without the belief and without the commitment to the belief, things will turn negative but they have remained positive even through many attacks and much negativity. What is our largest <coughs> ignorance? Where do you see the biggest distortion in our um, thought pattern and energy? When you drop into your negativity, it surrounds you in such a way that it pulls energy away from all light things. Understand. Thank you. I will go now. Can you give us possibly a poem about love? A poem about love. In language. Our love together saturates the room. We become the room as a unit. We bring together ourselves with a passion that far exceeds that of our brains and bodies. We come together under a force of positive union that makes for an explosion such as a nova or a supernova in the spaces of our minds and we love in the passion of that which we were given and we know ourselves in many ways beyond what is physical and what is super physical and the metaphysical becomes who we are in love and transfers us to this plane where only we exist at this time. 
It's a wonderful poem. <coughs> mm, I must go. Thank you very much for your visit. And please come again. There is so much resonance and so much importance uh, in your visitation. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. <coughs> Namaste. Uh. Hello. <coughs> you have six minutes to oh. exit out the door. <coughs> Take your All time. Right. You have six minutes. It's a lot. Yeah, Jim needs to go somewhere. Wow. <laughs> in six minutes. Yeah, I have to be. Oh, what time is it? Okay. Nine minutes. Up All right. 12. Um, wow. That was. That was wow. Okay. <clears throat> when they left, they took all the uh, she, he, whatever it was, took everything out of my mind. It was totally blank. Um, and I was like, "Whoa, okay, <laughs> I'm better. I'm better now." I just wanted to announce uh, there is a uh, nice uh, channel and a site um, created by Slava. And uh, it's wonderful. Uh, it is our channelings, uh, mostly you know, all our webinars, uh, split into meaningful pieces and sorted by topic. So you can see all all topic at once in a, and as a playlist. It's called Hucola Video Library. Hucola is abbreviation from Human Colony H U C O L O. So Hucolo. Uh, video library. If you go on YouTube, you can find it Hukula Video Library, and on our, on our side also there is a on the left there is uh, a menu item which is video library. So, so Thank you, uh, yeah, Slava, it's some great work, and I believe it will be become even more popular than this Hukula TV because you know it's easier to find information. It's more condensed there, more specific. All poetry in one place, all reptilians in one place, all whatever uh, other civilization, you know, by topic. Wow. <sighs> you can Ooh. start packing if you like, or you can. Uh, oh, no, I just have to. What is going on is I have to go pick up a queen size bed. I'm giving my single bed to the homeless, and someone is donating a queen size bed, which I will put in my spare bedroom so that when I have guests, I will be able to accommodate them better. Did you say I put it in my spirit bedroom? My spirit spare, spare bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, Jim. So it's, I'm giving my bed to the homeless because they need single beds, and I'm giving they're giving me a, a queen size. So it's a wonderful trade-off. Yeah, um, that's, that's but, nice, Jim. So I'll be able to entertain guests better here. All right, so we, we want uh, we were asked to have a group meditation about the uh, the to calm the fire. Uh, it is in California. There is a beautiful lake. It's kind of uh, yes. west coast. There is a kind of a little bit of uh, <laughs> I would say it's three hour drive from from Silicon Valley to the east. So there is a one la wonderful lake. It's surrounded by pines and it's so beautiful. It's all like almost like low low level mountains. And east of that there is a uh, drought and uh, forest is burning. It's time for you too. Oh, that's my uh, time. Yeah. So um, uh, they want rain. They want rain and they want uh, the fire to go to go. Okay. Um. So as uh, past our message, Raphael, uh, uh, Archangel Raphael, uh, gave his name for kind of uh, to use as a name to where we can send our prayers. You can use any angel name, but Raphael's in charge of that guidance for that. So, all right, I have to go. Sorry, because I have to be there at twelve thirty, and it's already quarter. After. No, no, you have to say something. Oh, okay. give, give a blessing about the lake. Okay. 
All right. <sighs> we ask everyone who is helping us from the stars to God to the extraterrestrials to humans to spirit world and realms to help us with this fire to keep it under control now to put it out to bring us the the answers to the questions of why it's there and to just let it be gone we know that it's the way of the earth to have these kind of things happen but we just ask that if possible it be gone and that we be recovered from it Thank water you. water we ask for rain and water and life to return. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Sorry we're leaving that abruptly, but um, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your energy. Much love, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Much love. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Jim. Everybody's still there. Yes, it's still live. We're waiting. Yeah. Is it stalled or it looks like it froze? Yeah. There we go. Should we should we close out and open up a new one? Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey Kim. Hey honey. How are you? Why does okay. it still say live? There. Let's close. That's a really good question. Let's close What's and then and then. Yeah. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.